All right. Okay. Now, all right. So, but the whole purpose of the information I want to share today is is I want you to to kind of understand. I'm trying to help. My goal is to try to get you to see things in a different light. All right. So, what I mean by that, for some reason, whenever we say black people, white people, um, we focus on these terms. And we don't know the exact meaning of these terms and where they actually came from. And when you do that, you take on the identity of someone who has no standing in law, if that makes any sense. All right. So if I was to say that I'm a black man, what does that mean? What does that mean? If you say I'm black, what does that mean? You ain't got no rights. You ain't got no rights? Is it the color of my skin? If you say it's the color of your skin? Not, not exactly. Not exactly, but that's what most people believe it to be. Right? So it's an identity. Or an adjective. It's a descriptor. All right. So what I got on screen right now is the original meaning of the word black. And you can find this original meaning of the word black in the Webster's Dictionary, 1828, all right? Now, the whole reason for me showing you this is because I want you to understand, back in 1828, this is what the word black actually meant, all right? It says black. The little small a means is an adjective. This is the origin of it. Sax. This is another variation of it. Black, B-L-A-C, and B-L-A-C in this little, see this little a right there, Celtic. Oh, it's Celtic, meaning it comes from over there in Britain. Black, pale, wane, livid, blacken, blackon, to become pale, to turn white to become black or to blacken, to expose the sun or to bleach, also to lighten. This was the original meaning of the word black in 1828. Does everybody understand that? Are we still on? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, okay. Does everybody understand that? Because it's very important because if you don't understand the meaning of words and the origin of the words, then what these people will have you do is they will have you taken on the identity for something that has no standing in law, which is the exact reason why you can't get reparations today. That's why everybody else that comes over here from the Ukraine, Afghan, from Afghanistan, from Mexico, all these people can get all these loans, start all these businesses, start all of these different ventures, but we can't get shit because we have no standing in law. Because we take on by words and terms that have no meaning. Okay? And basically what they have done to us is a form of witchcraft. Means that they have used words and their system in order to put us in a stupor or in blindness, all right? So if black means pale, then uh, one sec. Any questions so far? All right, so if black means pale, then this is what white means. That's what I was about to ask. Doesn't white mean they're from Africa? 
So what now? I was about to ask, doesn't white mean they're actually from Africa? No. Africa? Nope. This is what white means. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. All right. So this is this comes straight out of Black's Law Dictionary. It says free white persons referred to in the Naturalization Act as amended July 14, 1870 has meaning naturally given to them with first use. One statutory 103C, meaning persons belonging to the European races, commonly counted as white in their descendants, including such descendants in other countries. It includes all European Jews, more or less intermixed with peoples of Celtic. Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. It includes the Magars, Laps, and Finns, and the Basques, and Albanians. It includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal. The mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenicians, and African uh, inhabitants of Sicily. The mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. It does not mean Caucasian race, Aryan race or Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European Dravidian Semitic and Mongolian peoples who inhabited Persian. So the key meaning of this is when you say white or that you claim the term title white, it does not mean what we commonly call people as white today. Wow. What what book is that again from? For you for you uh this is the Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. All right. What year is that publishing? This dictionary? Or, uh, yeah. The, the Black's Law Dictionary. The it's Black about, Law Dictionary. It's about eight editions of it, but the fourth edition has the most, um, this is the one that, that uh, attorneys, lawyers, judges, and legal standing, this is the dictionary that they use. And the one that I have was published in 1968. So you can claim white on your application. You can claim white on your census if any of your forefathers came from Europe. But that's pretty much on all of our um well, a lot of us do the DNA, they got, you know, they have Irish and, you know, uh, British and, and so on. <laughs> right. That's funny. Right. So, the, so in, in the dictionary, the Webster's Dictionary 1828 edition, they used to have it online where you can go to it and type in words, but you can't do it now. They, for whatever reason, that link is not working. But this is the, I'm holding it right here in my hand. And I'll, that way I can show everybody what it looks like. Uh, all right, this dictionary right here. This is the Black's Law Dictionary that I was just reading. They had the definition of free white persons. And this is the American Dictionary, 1828, all right? So, if people from Europe came over here to America that looked like me and you, then what did the people that was already over here in America, what did they look like? So the definition of American in the Webster's Dictionary is a native of America originally applied to the aboriginal or copper, copper colored races found here by the Europeans now apply to the descendants of the Europeans born in America. Okay. So the original Americans were people that looked like me and you. They had so, to be according to what you just read. So then the people who came here to America also looked like me and you. They had to look like us. So you had to create a separate status for them, which is where free white persons come into play or white persons. Those are people that look like me and you and they had to give them a classification. Now, the Caucasians that came here were black. <laughs> they were the original black people. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Repeat that again. I, you just Caucasians that came here were the original black people. 
So when you read in the history books about the black slaves, they weren't talking about people that looked like me and you. They were talking about people who we commonly call white people today or Caucasians. Okay, I got you. Okay. Okay. Now, I have a book. Called, uh, how did how did all this switch up? That's the question I think most of us would like to know. Like, how did it all? What happened that it switched? How we came out of our names? How we became known as the blacks and everything? All right, so. Or the color of color folks or minority, however you want to put it. All right, so our people that was here in the Americas who were the original, I'd use the word Indians, okay? Um, our people spoke Latin here in the States, okay? The Europeans also spoke something called lingua franca, meaning a Frankish tongue. Right, and the ones from Britain actually spoke Latin and Old English. So, what happened was, whenever they engaged in commerce, they had to be able to communicate with each other. Right. So, if you don't have somebody that knows how to speak Latin, then how would somebody from Germany be able to communicate with that person? They will use sign language. How does referees communicate with the public on the football field when a call is played in the NFL? Don't they use these signals to right. relate what the call is? Right. Don't the referees on the basketball court blow the whistle and they use a the hand and, and use it to communicate what infraction happened? Mm -hmm. All right. So sign language is a universal language. So until you started to use phrases that the people that you're trying to communicate with, then you learn to pick up bits and pieces of each other's language. So example. What does the word diem mean? D-I-E-M. When you get a per diem, what does diem mean? When well, somebody pay for you, like a company send you somewhere yeah. and they pay for the hotel and everything. Yeah. So you get $35 per diem. Per day. Per day. Did you know diem is Latin? Per day. Yes. No, I didn't know that. All right. So you never, you, nobody never taught you Latin, but you speak in Latin. What does bougie mean? A bourgeoisie. Uppity. Uppity. Uppity nigga. <laughs> All right, that's French. You ever had French class before? No. All right, so how do you know a French word? Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Lingua means language. Lingua is Latin. So they take all of these languages and they put them together and that language became known as a pigeon pigeon language, which is the English that we speak today. Yes, sir. It runs deep down here in Louisiana. Yes. Deep. Yes. French, Latin, and English and Hebrew as well. And exactly. Creek. Yep. You're, you're exactly right. So that's how they were able to do it. They used language and they changed the meaning of the original word. Here's another word, and I'll share the screen with you. See that word? Niggard. Niggard means a stingy or ungenerous person. What do you think the word nigger became? Nigger, N-I-G-G-E-R. Referring to us. Referring to us. Because if we were the people that had the land over here and you had squatters that came from Europe that wanted our land and we didn't want to share the land with them, they call us niggards. And when they use the court system to take our land from us, then we became known as niggards. <laughs> Everybody understand that? For sure. Yeah. 
Let me read. Let me read you this something real quick. What Abraham Lincoln said, because this all goes back. All goes back to Rome. This is what Abraham Lincoln said in a speech that he gave. And this, it comes out of this book right here. If you can see it. It's called In His Name. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States stated, as long as God gives me a heart, a brain to think and a hand to execute my will, I would devote it against the power which has attempted to use the, mach the machineries of the courts the machinery of the courts to destroy the rights and character of an American citizen. But there is a thing which is very certain. It is that if the American people could learn what I know of the fierce hatred of the generality of the priest of Rome against our institutions, our schools, our most sacred rights, and our so dearly brought liberties, they would drive them away tomorrow um, from among us or would shoot them as traitors. So this is Abraham Lincoln speaking out against the Catholic Church. The history of a thousand years tells us that wherever the Church of Rome is not a dagger to pierce the bosom of a free nation, she has a stone to her neck and a ball to her feet to paralyze her and prevent her advance in the ways of civilization, science, intelligence, happiness, and liberty. I do not pretend to be a prophet, but though not a prophet, I very well see a dark cloud over the horizon and that dark cloud is coming from Rome. So basically the civil war was a war that was manipulated by the Roman Catholic Church. And it was designed to steal your heritage and your land and to give it to another people, which is where these Caucasians come in. So, so what you're saying is that we were the Aborigines. We had other, from what I'm understanding, we had other Negroes or people who look like us that came to America, met with people who, people who look like us. And from what the, everything I'm understanding, I learned, we had the call, well, the, those who were, we call white or Caucasians today, they were the slave caste that we brought to America or that was that was coming to America. Yes. Am I, am I, okay. All right. Yes. And somehow the shoes switch and now we're the, the so-called blacks or the, you know what I mean? And that the niggas was actually the Aborigines. Yes. Okay, wow. That's deep. exactly what I'm oh. saying. I'm gonna share another picture with you just so you could so I can make the point. How did it say where is it at? All right. Uh See this picture right here that I'm pointing to? See all these, you see all these people of color? Wait a minute. They stand in front of a building. Yeah. All right, that's Howard University in 1867. In DC. In DC. This is two years after the Civil War. You see all these well-dressed people, your ancestors? So my question is, with that picture, is they tell us that we came from slavery, right? This is two years after the Civil War. Where are all these, edu where are all these, these Black folks that never went to elementary school or high school? How did they get to go to a college? And how did they get to be so well-dressed? This 1867, when they just built that school, I mean, the government was was still reeling from the Civil War. So they wouldn't have no money to invest in some Negroes to send them to school, right? Right. Right there. Yeah, there you go. Let's see if I can zoom in. Look at that. Look at that. Look at all these well-dressed people. Do they like slaves to you or descendants of slaves? Not at all. 
but they want you to believe that the story of roots and and all that good stuff they want you to believe that and explain what we're looking at all right so what you're looking at is all right so what you're looking at is a caucasian who was captured all right and they think he's a runaway slave so he's being inspected cracker worth three thousand three thousand going once mr wayne going once three thousand going twice this cracker sold to the jackson plantation wrap him up that's my cracker well cracker you're not my problem anymore I just made $3,000 off your cracker ass. <laughs> Chattel up. <laughs> Bill of sale. What's your name, boy? No, I don't know where you're from, but you're in my world now. What's your name, Cracker? Michael. Michael Stone. Well, your new name. Right now, this is all the stuff that they said happened to us. But actually, it wasn't us, it was actually them. This is off of a movie called, a uh, TV series called Cracker. They put on Amazon. And when they first announced this series and they showed the trailer, white people got so much of an uproar and got pissed off. And this is the auction block. Now, I just showed you the picture of all those folks in Howard, right? Yeah. How well dressed they were. Look at this. These are free white people selling black slaves. Now, the Webster's Dictionary said that black means pale or the bleach. So when you read in the history books about these black people being sold into slavery, they were talking about these pale faced people who had no land heritage of their own in Europe that were being brought over here to the Americas. Mm. Mm. You know this, you know this is a shell shot. Many of our people won't believe it because of the narrative that's been taught in our schools and everything. Exactly. Abraham Lincoln just said the priests of Rome were attacking their schools. How do you attack a school? Through indoctrination. You start to change the identity of the original people into something else, and then you give their heritage to another group of people. And those people become the overseers. And then after a couple of generations in school, you've been indoctrinated to believe something else. Go ahead, sis. Yes, sir. Um... I would like to know the origin of these white people and why they felt the need to come over here at some point, you know, were they really, cause I get, sometimes I get the uh, message that or the story that they were not even human. Are they from the Caucasus mountains or why they have to leech onto everything we do as a people and change our history around at all, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm confused of who they really are. So All right. that's my question. All right, so this is the thing. Everybody that has melanin in their skin is not of your bloodline. Is that a fair assessment? If you're looking at the biblical scriptures, where are the Hittites? Where are the Amorites? Where are the Canaanites? Where are all these people that our people were at war at, with, that look like us? Where are they at? Mm-hmm. 
they're um, on the other side of the world, I think, huh? So, uh, a lot of them over here. Okay. You see what I'm saying? A lot of them over here. Okay. But they have gotten us to believe that we are colors out of a crayon box. So then you start to look at all people that look like you as your brother when they may not be your brother. They might be your enemy because we have mixed so much. We don't know who's who. That's why the Most High told us not to mingle our seed because it causes confusion. We're supposed to be separate. It's the same thing with these Caucasians, all right? Not everybody who has pale skin is of the bloodline of Cain. Some of them are Nephilim hybrids. Mm. Right, that's what I yeah. was that's what I've been yeah, for uh, sure. hearing. So I wanted to see what you had to say about that. Some of them are of the line of Cain, who had the mark of leprosy on his descendants. Mm -hmm. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So you got to know who's who. Now, these right. Caucasians are the face that the world is focused on while the hidden hand is behind the scenes calling the shots. Let me show you something else. Hey, Ephraim, can I, can I add on to that, what you just said? Yeah. You know when the scripture says the last days should be the days of Noah, right? And Noah, it was the Canaanites, it was the, it was the seed of Cain who was on a pre-flood. And when we read the Lamech of Cain and, and the scriptures and all that, they tell you that they had no melon. They were what we call white people today. You know what hmm. I mean? Or albinos and... And it makes sense why the most I had to make Noah an albino because that's what the people were looking like. Most of the people were looking like at that time. They were like no melanated. They were not melanated people. So today, if it was the same thing in the days of Noah and those people were ruling who were Cain, seed of Cain, then that shows you that today that the people, the Caucasians, or, the, or, or, or a lot of the white people we see in the day are actually Canaanites. Does that make sense to you? Yep. Wow. All right, now, check this out. Now, you know everything that's going on in the Ukraine today, right? Yes, sir. Look at this Kazarian mm -hmm. emblem and look at the crest of the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it's basically the same. It's the same. Now, if you know anything about the Khazarian Empire, the, the Khazars are the ones that adopted Judaism. Because when the Ottomans were fighting against the Christians, they went to King Bulan, who was the king of the Khazarian Empire, and told him, you either going to choose a side or we're going to invade you. So he chose to remain neutral and adopt adopted. Judaism. Judaism. This is where a lot of Edomites wind up migrating to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, with that being said, these Khazars did not look like these pale faced people that you see today that we commonly call white people or Caucasians. These people are the ones that can blend in and some of them look Jewish. Some of them look Arab. Some of them look Spanish. Some of them look Italian. Mm. But the common theme among them is they're into child sacrifice, they're into pedophilia, and they're into treating the world as goyim or cattle. Mm. But they're also the ones that practice the Kabbalah. And they're into the Talmud. Mm -hmm. Okay. These people, along with the priests of Mahan or Cain, are the ones that are the hidden hand that's ruling the world right now. And right now, their system is under attack because their power and their stronghold is in the Ukraine right now. That's right. Think about it. Russia invaded Ukraine. The Ukrainians, for the most part, are Russian. But these Khazars are not Russian. Right. Okay. When have you ever known all of the corporations at one time band together and attack one country? They're talking about not even playing certain movies in Russia. 
the new Doctor Strange movie, they said we're not going to play that in Russia. They're not going to be because of what they're doing in Ukraine. You're seeing all these support Ukraine signs coming mm -hmm. all over the place. You got all the banks and stuff. We're not going to do any business in Russia because the hidden hand that are the money changers, their primary base of operations right now is in the Ukraine. You're seeing a change in the guard going from the old fiat currency system because the Rothschilds in them are also Khazars. Mm -hmm. Their whole banking system is ready to go goodbye. That is one of the reasons why they came up with COVID. So they can reset the economies. So if you're not careful, they're going to trick you into supporting Ukraine when they're mm -hmm. your damn enemy. <laughs> yep. Now, with that being said, where these Caucasians came from, which I showed you at the beginning of the class, that screenshot of the German tapestry. This right here. So your question is, where these people come from? With these long toenails, wild hair. Are right? these are the Kazarians? Are these, uh, I mean, no. like, no. we know they're white, but are they are they the, the Nephilim bloodline? I would these, so are the, these are the descendants of the Neanderthals. These are the wild men. These are the Slavic people. These are these Caucasians that are over here today. These are the people that were being shipped off over here to the States from Europe. Mm. Hold on now, brother. You're going to be called a racist now. No, that's not <laughs> racist. That's facts. That's facts. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Check this out. This book right here. This book is called it wasn't about slavery, exposing the great lie of the Civil War. This is on page number five in this book. It says, all U.S. slave ships were built in the North. None were constructed in the South. Their crews were mostly Northern men and Northerners prospered by the trade. It says, the centers of the slave fleets were not New Orleans, Charleston, or Savannah. They docked at Boston, Massachusetts, and Providence, Rhode Island, later joined by New York City, which was the financial center of the slave business. Now, my question to you is this. They said that the slaves came from the west coast of Africa over here, right? Isn't the east coast and in the south closer to the west coast of Africa than up in the north? Does it make sense for them to sell the slave ships? up to the north and not down in the south, unless those slaves were coming from Europe, which means that the north was closer to Europe than the south was to Europe. You, you, you following what I'm saying? Yeah. It says by 1703, slavery was a respected institution in the north. More than 42% of New York City households owned slaves. That was the second highest total of any city in the 13 colonies, surpassed by only Charles and South Carolina. They were primarily employed as domestic servants and laborers. You hear what I just said? Yeah, wait, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I'm getting kind of confused a little bit. So in the 13 colonies, right? Yeah. You're talking about the, the so-called Caucasian white people today. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I, 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 I'll let you go ahead. Go ahead. It says, slavery grew throughout the United States in the 18th century. In Connecticut, for example, one half of all ministers, lawyers, and public officials owned slaves, and one third of all doctors had them as well. In 1690, remind, remember now, when you're talking about the North, all right, you're talking about old money, 
old European money. Think about that, because if the financial headquarters of the 13 colonies was in New York, that's where most of the money's at, right? That's where the Dutch, the French, yeah. the British, that's where they primarily were at, as far as the economic stronghold. The South was more, more mainly our culture. Now, if you are melanated people that came from Europe and you belong to aristocratic families, you're going to own servants, right? Now, by 1690, no blacks or Indians could be out on the street after nine o'clock at night, or they could go beyond their town limits or could not go beyond their town limits without a pass. You hear what I just said? So when I say no blacks, don't think about people that look like you. Think about these Caucasian people. Mm. So no blacks or Indians could be out on the street at the nine o'clock. And they could not go beyond their town limits without a pass. You got to understand during that time, it's like a military base. Can you go on a military base, Kenya? No, I cannot. You got to have permission to go on that base, right? Correct. All right, so if you was Aboriginal to this land, and you got a town that was controlled by free whites, if you wanted to go in that town, you had to get permission. So when you say free whites, I'm, cause I, it's, it's, you're talking about actually people who look like us. Yes. Isn't that what the definition of free white said? Does not mean Caucasian? Right, so right. Because Caucasian, we, who the hell are you talking about? Right, because this is talking about classification. It's exactly. not talking about color. Exactly. Gotcha. Because mm -hmm. they owned the cities and towns in the 13 colonies. That was their territories. So in order for you to go in one of those cities and towns, if you weren't a free white, if you were an American who was copper colored, you needed permission. And now that makes sense, Ephraim, not to cut you off, because when we had the Republic of America, the presidents of that was all black. We're all yes. looking like people, all, all people looking like us. I want to say black. All right. people who look like us. Right. Absolutely. Right. I know that much. I remember that, that information. Now I'm going to share something else with you. It's going to blow your mind. It's good, brother. It's getting good, brother. It's getting good. Don't stop. Do the screen sharing real quick. All right. See this book right here? Would you, you see it? Yes, sir. Virginia's Colonial Soldiers, right? This is a book that talks about the soldiers that sound, that, that, that signed up to fight in wars for the colonies. Now, remember during the Revolutionary War, they said that only the, the, the black person that died in that war was what? Christmas Addicts, right? Remember Christmas yeah. Addicts? Yeah, absolutely. Hold on one second. Hello? We're ready to leave in 10 minutes, okay? All right. All right, so um, I have the original book right here. All right. Now, what I want to show you, we have it. One second. All right, so on page 45, which this book doesn't have a page 45, because um, it's only just giving you a brief um, look at the book. Just wanna, I just want to hold this up. Page 45, you see right here, French Indian War. All right, so the French and Indian War was fought from 1754 to 1763. All right, so. What I want to show you, Return to the Second Company of Rangers commanded by Captain John Ashby, 21 October 1755. Look at these names. Can you see these names? Yeah. Leonard Harper, 5 foot 10, dark, 28, Virginia farmer. Daniel Morgan, sandy colored. 25, Pennsylvania, Farmer. John Rouse, Sandy. 
Virginia, Farmer, Benjamin Barton, Fair. Fair, that could be a light-skinned, melanated person, or it could be a car, or what we would call Caucasian. All right? William Dotson, Brown, Farmer. Thomas Dolan, Fair. Hooper, Fair, from Virginia, Farmer. James Frazier, Dark. Timothy Conway, Brown, Irish, Smoke Shoemaker. John Cooper, Brown. Look at all these, brown, dark, dark, brown, dark, fair, sandy. You got a great deal of people who are melanated that's fighting for Virginia in the French Indian Wars. So all this about the Civil War was the first time we fought the Buffalo Soldiers, basically. It's a lie. Just, it's a lie. It's a lie. I'm it's a lie. telling you what they look like. How many brown yeah. white people you know? Yeah, for sure. Right. This is this is in a book. Look at all these brown people. It's more of them than there are fair people. Which puts it in perspective when you see something like this. When they selling these black people into slavery. Send, send me that link again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send that when we're done to the group. Before okay. you go, real quick question. How did it switch? Can you put that real fast, sum, summary? It switched. It switched when at the end of the Civil War, because the, basically the Confederate States were a confederacy of Aboriginal American people who was running the government in the South. What I mean by Aboriginal people, I mean people that look like me and you. That's why you got the picture of the Louisiana Congress. It was all melanated people. That's why you never see any pictures of any actual Civil War battles. Because the people that actually fought in the Civil War, the majority of the soldiers, were melanated people. Here's another book, Black Confederate Soldiers. See, that's why when you go and you read these history books, they put that spell on you, making you believe that black means what we look like and white means these pale people, when in actuality, that's not how it really was. So if the North won the Civil War, which they did, now they can rewrite the curriculum in the history books and start teaching the kids another version of history. That's what's called indoctrination. So after a couple of generations, you begin to assume the identity of the people that was once your servants. Now, most of these Caucasians didn't really start coming over here in mass numbers until Nicholas Tsar II of Russia freed the Slavic people in Europe, in Eastern Europe. Once he freed those Slavic people, the Catholic Church worked with the monarchies and sent them over here to America to conquer the West. And some of these people wind up going to the South and through the daughters of the Confederacy, which they rewrote the history of the Civil War, they adopted the Southern heritage, which was never their heritage to begin with. Remember, right. everywhere these people go, they assimilate the culture and take it over. That's what the scripture says in Ecclesiastics, sure does. They don't have no heritage of their own. They can't even tell you what part of Europe they came from. Go and ask the average Caucasian, hey, what part of Europe? You should still have some, some forefathers over there, right? They ain't got no connection to Europe. They just as bad as we are when it comes to identifying their heritage and their history. They don't know it. Well, they say they mix, they mix much. I hear a lot of them saying that. Irish, German. I'm Irish, German. Oh, the Irish you know, and the German was us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That was That's up. I'm gonna show you one more thing, and, I, and then I got a roll. I'm sorry, okay. I got to leave so early, but I got a. Um... No, this is good, bro. This is good. This is real good. And you know, and I just really just kind of. Is that why they try to hit us with this Africa stuff? Yes, yes, because the pan original Europeans, pan Africanists, are government agents. Yeah. They're government agents. So Your job, just like Alex Haley, Haley, was to get you focused on Africa. 
trying to get you to leave here because everybody wants to come here, but they want you to leave because they know as soon as you claim your identity that they got to give you your land back. This was done by, this is the observation concerning the increase of mankind in 1751 was written by Thomas Jefferson, all right? This is his words, this ain't mine. And it's basically, he was given a speech and he wrote a paper on the conditions of the world during that time. If you go down towards the end of his speech, this will blow your mind. Verse 24, this is, this is Thomas Jefferson, this ain't me. It says, which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white people, now remember, in this context, they've rewritten the original words so that you can understand it in today's lingo, okay? The number of purely white people in the world is proportionately very small. All Africa is black or 20. Asia, chiefly 20. America, exclusive of the newcomers, holy soul. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally what we will call a swathy complexion, as are the Germans also. That's black. Thank you. The Saxons only accept who the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. I wish their numbers would increase. And while we are, as I may call it, scouring our planet by clearing America of woods, so making this side of our globe reflect a brighter light in the eyes of the inhabitants of Mars or Venus. So basically, oh, he said, why should we, in the sight of superior beings, darken its people uh -huh. this is benjamin franklin so when he's talking about purely white people he's talking about caucasian 